So my name is Adam Carnow. I'm a community evangelist with Esri. Um, I'm on our patterns and practices team. I work out of the Charlotte, North Carolina office. I'm here today to talk to you about Enterprise GIS strategic planning for success. I want to remind everybody that this presentation is part of the GIS manager track. All sessions, all eight sessions are in this same room. So there's four today and then four tomorrow. So uh, a lot of the um, subjects I'm going to be talking about will get deeper dives in these other sessions. So definitely consider them uh, while you're here. Quickly, I want to review the abstract, make sure everybody's in the right place. It takes more than technology for an enterprise GIS to be successful. It requires business and IT management skills. This session will review the seven elements of a successful enterprise GIS and provide strategies how GIS managers can implement them. Seven elements are vision and leadership, understand how GIS can contribute to your organization's success, develop and maintain a GIS strategic plan, implement effective governance, implement evolutionary approaches, also known as change management, deploy engaging apps, and then recruit, develop, and maintain good staff. So about seven years ago, I found this article on the web and it changed my life. It led to me becoming a community evangelist because it got me so fired up and passionate. And it's called The Underutilization of GIS Technologies. And then there was this quote that really drove me nuts. And it said, generally people outside of GIS think of GIS just as maps or a graphic product or the younger brother of CAD. Okay, I think we all here can appreciate um, how completely misguided that is. Um, but the article went on and it suggested to do five things to change that. And so this was seven years ago. Number one, it said promote the system. So I'm an evangelist. All of you should be evangelists as well because everybody in your organization that doesn't use GIS thinks that you make maps. So you need to promote the abilities of GIS and change that image of yourself from a map maker into a solution provider. Number two, it said get a GIS health checkup. So hopefully everybody here goes to the doctor once a year and gets a checkup to make sure everything's going okay so you can be proactive and prevent um, anything bad from happening. You should do the same for your GIS. You should bring somebody in from the outside. They should do a health checkup on your GIS and that way you're being proactive before bad things happen. Number three, use the best of breed approach. So best practices are key. They're called best practices for a reason. Everybody out there should know the best practices and implement them. Number four, consider software as a service to the cloud. So again, this was seven years ago already suggesting to use SaaS. Um, and if you're not using the cloud, then you're missing out on a whole lot of power for, for GIS. And then lastly, it said set GIS up as the central hub. One of the huge uh, advantages of GIS is that it can take in so many different types of data and then put them all together in a geographic context. And that's really the intent and how GIS should be set up to serve an organization. And I had found that article from this one, which was about mapping the cause using GIS to determine potential causes for cancer. And they had a similar quote. GIS is often seen as maps or a visual graphics product and the more advanced capabilities are ignored because they remain unknown to key departments and decision makers. And that's totally true. The key departments and decision makers in your organization need your help and want your help. They just don't know that you can help or how you can help. So you've got to reach out to them and market, again, the capabilities that, that help them achieve their mission. Just some more information. This, was, uh, this came out in January of this year. This was a survey done uh, by Geospatial World on the web, uh, and it was asking IT directors um, what is your biggest challenge as far as uh, getting the most ROI out of their GIS? And the number one answer, 38%, is lack of awareness among users and policymakers. So again, we've got to get the word out there as to what GIS can do so that we can be doing more to help the organization. Um, ArcGIS, don't underestimate it. It actually can transform an organization. It can be a uh, method of digital transformation. It can change an organization for the better. It can really change the way they work and, and do amazing things. So most organizations are set up like the diagram on the left, hierarchical, very formal, very slow. Someone at the top needs something, that request trickles down to the bottom. Some people do some magic and then it bubbles back up. Um, and unfortunately, again, that's how most organizations are set up. With the way people really want to work is on the right, and that's networked, where um, people already know me and my business, they know what I need, I shouldn't have to pick up the phone or email or IM or go find somebody and saying, I need a map. 
it should just be available on my device 24 7 365 and just in a few clicks I can get to the information I need and make a decision from it. And that's the way ArcGIS is designed to work and if you implement it that way and push the capabilities out to the edge um, then you can actually change an organization for the better and really make that make, make a huge difference. There's many many examples of this that you, you know you'll see all over this week. Um, and then one of the things that I think we've done a really poor job as a GIS community is calculating and documenting and publishing ROI tied to GIS. Very few people are doing that and it's a shame and I've realized it and it's got to be that the top of your list. You've got to start to calculate ROI. Um, there's a session on ROI as part of the track. Um, but Google recently did this um, a study and they hired a consultant firm to try to find out what the impact of GIS and GPS was in the economy. And they estimated that it generates about four hundred billion dollars in annual revenue and consumer benefits of over five hundred and fifty billion dollars in saved time and travel time and fuel, et cetera. Um, and what the, I really love this quote, it said basically the investigators found that distinct from their cost, it's difficult to overestimate the system's value. The benefits of using a GIS or GPS are so immediate, useful and universal that even with a premium attached to their current price, they may be a bargain. So we all know it deep down that GIS saves money and saves time and can have a positive impact. It's about time we start documenting that and publishing it and let people know. And I know you all are very, very busy um, and you've got a lot going on. But if you really want to use GIS to be a, a force of digital transformation in your organization, you've got to make time for it. You know, this article I thought was excellent. It talked about many are simply too busy to pursue digital transformation. So we've really, really got to make it a priority um, and put some of our other work to the side, delegate it or get rid of it. And I know that the reason many of you are very, very busy is because of things like this, the CIO's legacy IT mountain where that part of what's top and then the real challenge is below. Things like aging legacy systems, bureaucracy, years of underinvestment, you know, dealing with the traditional data center, uh, cost center focus, legacy skills, closed platforms, et cetera. So I know there's a lot of um, challenges out there but we've got to work, work beyond them. And one of the ways that you can make uh, time available to do this is I really love this article I, I saw in the Harvard Business Review and it said stop doing low value work. Now you all are very talented people, you have special capabilities, you need to use the top levels of those abilities as much as possible. And the only way you're going to make time and, and have a big impact on an organization is to make time. And so you've got to take the low value work that you're doing and delegate it, get rid of it, do whatever you can. Um, anybody can make a map now, so you need to let everybody make their own maps. Um, we need to offload as much as we can and really dedicate the highest level of your capabilities to this effort. So this presentation came from a blog post I did on LinkedIn um, and I turned it into this presentation. Um, and this, that blog post was initially uh, part of the Esri Q&A tied to the UC a couple years ago and it got cut from that document at the last minute and I thought, well, I took a lot of time and wrote that. I think there's some value in it. So I turned it into the blog post and that's what you're going to see today. So what makes an enterprise GIS successful? So I travel all across this country. I meet with customers that do everything. I've seen every kind of GIS there is out there. And if I could distill it down to three things, it's this. First of all, it's more than technology. But it's motivated people committed to managing change. So. IT industry is changing faster and faster. You have got to embrace that and move with it as best as you can. You cannot resist it. Number two, people that effectively apply the technology in a sustainable manner. And by sustainable I don't mean green. By sustainable I mean not writing code unless you absolutely have to. So that your COTS technologies can be updated quickly and moved along. And then lastly, following best practices. I don't know how many times I've had 
discussions with customers that get a little bit uncomfortable because they refuse to follow best practices. I don't understand that personally because we're the company that wrote the software. We work with hundreds of thousands of organizations around the globe. We kind of know the best way to run it. And um, we, I just wish more people would follow our best practices. There's a best practices session as part of the track. So if you're interested in learning more about our best practices, please um, attend that session. But most importantly, I met with an assistant city manager once and he told me whether or not our GIS implementation is successful is not a technology problem, it's a people problem. And he's totally correct. Uh, if you break it down simply, GIS is data, hardware, software on a network. And if you set it up right, it will sing. The obstacles we deal with are all people related. Um, and so that is a much, much harder challenge and that's what we've got to concentrate on and I know it's hard to do to change the culture and change people's minds but if you're going to extract the most value out of your GIS implementation, that's what we've got to do. So I'd like to show a short video here to show you what I believe is one of the most successful enterprise GISs I've ever seen. Uh, and this is Pinellas County, Florida, on um, the west coast of Florida, really beautiful spot. I worked close, have been working closely with them for over 11 years. Uh, again, I think top shelf, one of the best GISs you'll ever see. So let me just run this short video. Pinellas County is on the west central coast of Florida. We are densely populated county in Florida. We have one million residents. In 276 square miles, we have 24 individual cities that we work with on a day to day basis. We have about 35 miles of coastline. We're also unique because we are a peninsula within a peninsula. And so we are affected by things like sea level rise and global climate change more than many other communities. We're surrounded almost completely by open water, Tampa Bay, Intercoastal Waterway, as well as the Gulf of Mexico. And you have that substantial climate to all order health development, and you have one problem. Flood insurance program 
and it rewards communities with flood insurance premium discounts based on how far above and beyond you are going than the federal requirements. And one of the major components of that is outreach and education. And these map applications are a very good way to relay that flood hazard message to your constituents. We're now saving over $5.2 million a year across unincorporated Pinellas County in flood insurance premiums. So all our residents, businesses, any county buildings, anybody that's in the floodplain is getting the biggest discount that you can get on an insurance premium. The next three years I see as kind of a renaissance for Enterprise GIS in the county where we're not doing the things that we have to do in order to kind of build the foundation for Enterprise GIS. Um, we're going to be doing the things that the businesses want us to do. Whether it's knowing uh, where your infrastructure is throughout the county and making better planning decisions based on that, or being able to analyze socio-demographic uh, trends and making strategic investments to lift everyone in the community, that is going to pay back for generations. Okay, so a few things in that video. Number one, that was a county commissioner talking about the value of GIS. How many elected officials in your organization that can talk about the value of GIS, all right? So they have sold it to the executives. You saw the public works director, you saw the floodplain coordinator, you saw the CIO. So the entire organization understands the value of GIS and does everything they can to extract the value out of it. You saw the public works director talk about the app that they, the ops dashboard they put together in the middle of a storm. They put it together in two hours and he now uses it every day since then to run his operations. You heard about a, uh, their floodplain apps that are saving the, ta the property owners $5.2 million a year in flood insurance. That app was put together in two days with Web App Builder without writing any code. So you want to talk ROI, they've got ROI, they've got executive sponsorship, they, they do just about all of it right. So to talk about these seven elements, that's what I'm going to get into right now. Um, the vision and leadership, understanding how GIS can contribute to your organization's success and the rest here. I'm going to go one by one and go through them. So vision and leadership, um, there's a difference between being a manager and being a leader. Uh, and I, I kind of knew this, but I never sat down to figure it out and I read this in a Harvard Business uh, Review article. And that is that what's a manager's job? A manager's job is to keep the operation running smoothly. So what that does is automatically make you very resistant to change because you don't want to upset the apple cart because it's going to make you inefficient. So a leader is someone that realizes we've got to change to take advantage of whatever the technology is doing or to get the most return on investment. So we are going to upset the apple cart for a short amount of time, but it's going to be better for us in the long term. So there's a ton of GIS managers out there, but this community needs more leaders. So it's changing your mindset from a management to a leadership one. Uh, let everyone know the capabilities and benefits of GIS. You saw Brian Zumwalt from Pinellas County in that video. Brian, he's moved up in the organization so he's no longer in GIS but when he was in GIS he was never in his office. He was always out in the departments, meeting with the directors, learning their business and then coming back and um, having his folks propose solutions to help them. They didn't want your help, they need your help, they just don't know it. So it's outreach. You have to document your vision and create and maintain a plan to realize that vision. Uh, too few organizations do not have strategic plans and if you want to get the most out of your investment, you've got to have a plan. You've got to know where you are and where you're going and how to get there. And it, if you think about it, it's your job to extract as much value as possible from your GIS investment. And it's your job to exceed the expectations of the people funding your operation. So if you work for a government agency, it's the taxpayers. If you work for a private sector company, it's the shareholders. If you work for an NGO, it's the donors. They're paying the bills. They're paying your salary and for the hardware and the software and all the work that's being done. They deserve a, a quality return on their investment in you and the system. So your job should be to extract as much value out of that as possible, which means pushing it out into the organization and doing more with it. And going back to these differences between managers and leaders, this was another article in Harvard Business Review and it um, showed these three differences. Leaders create value, managers count value. Leaders create circles of influence, managers create circles of power. Leaders lead people, 
and managers manage work. So there's a very difference there. And I've also heard that leaders create more leaders. So it's also about um, working with the people that you work with and having them change their mindset as well. So the next thing we want to talk about is understanding how GIS can contribute to your organization's success. How does your organization define success? Does your organization have a strategic plan? Do they have some initiatives? Do they have specific goals, objectives, and policies? Do they have performance management in place, such as key performance indicators or KPIs? Maybe if you're a government agency, do they want to be a smart community? Do they have that initiative going? You should know what these are, and your GIS work should directly support them. If a county commissioner in your organization believes that the number one problem in your county is the opioid epidemic, then you should be deploying GIS solutions to help uh, fight that opioid epidemic. Whether it's economic development, homelessness, crime, economic, you know, whatever it is, you need to align your work directly with what the top level folks believe are the biggest problems. So talk to leaders. Uh, I had elected officials and uh, executive in here yesterday as part of the uh, manager summit, and they're regular people, and they want your help. They're not going to come to you because they probably don't know what GIS is. You've got to go to them. And when you talk to them, ask them two things. Ask them what their vision is and ask them what their pain is. And they'll be more than happy to talk to you about both of those. And then simply learn their business and deploy solutions that help them get closer to that vision and help them alleviate their pain. If you do that, you will get support from them. And executive support is one of the most important elements of a successful enterprise GIS. And then you can even turn executives into GIS users. That's even better. You can deploy story maps and you can deploy operation dashboards. I'd like to show one more video that talks about this, um, how to talk to executives and elected officials. So this is Jack at uh, seven years ago at the 2011 uh, UC, the closing session. Somebody asked a question about how to communicate the value of GIS to executives. By the way, there's a session on that in the manager track coming up. Um, and he does a great six minute story about how people um, sell technology to him and what he's seen. So I'm gonna run that now. Yes, my question uh, for you is what is Esri planning on doing to broadly address the question asked earlier about tighter budgets by providing GIS professionals way to talk about the business value of GIS to convince their organizations to make the investments? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the evidence actually is that GIS saves money sometimes a lot of money, uh, also delivers huge value, sometimes huge value, and I'm thinking about very specific things like logistics. I mean, let me, let me say, Sears was a $3 million investment, resulted in $43 million savings. FedEx was an $8 million investment and several hundred million dollars of return on investment. There's those shining lights, but uh, in the typical city, it's about three, to five to one benefit cost ratio by implementing GIS and making it run in the city. Uh, and, the, and the evidence is all there. But in the context of tight budgets, that's not enough. Uh, it's not enough to have it on a book or have it in a report. You have to sell it. You have to be effective at talking to a manager. When Don Berry uh, first joined ESRI, he was hired to uh, implement SAP. And he came to my office, and I thought, well, this is the guy who's going to implement our back office and yakety yak. Uh, and uh, so we needed our accounting systems were in bad shape. 2000, year 2000 was coming up. Uh, and I was convinced, yeah, we got to get, get something done. But he pushed his way in and showed me exactly the benefits that would come. And I didn't actually believe him. Sorry, Don. <laughs> was, uh, he said, Jack, let me have $5 million. I didn't believe him at all. <laughs> uh, and if you give me $5 million, I'll give you back $12 million within a year. And uh, that, that was pretty effective sales. And, and, and he said also, by the way, I'll give you back $12 million every year after that, uh, which was more interesting to me. And I thought, even if we can break even with the investment, I would be happy, right? I mean, I was just 
looking at. I'm not so interested in back office, uh, but Don was, and he was passionate about this, and so I said, okay, let's go, and we did it. And it turned out that not only did we do that on time in budget, uh, you know, was, he, did it, he, he did a lot of other things, which is why he's who he is right now. Um, along the way, the organization started working much better. We had much better communication. We not only saved the money, but the people up here stopped fighting at the director's meetings because we had one information set that we could run the company with. We knew what was going on. Um, and so Don sold me, that's the point, on the power of this. And he engaged me not just in that first meeting, but every damn Friday afternoon he'd come in and show me uh, his progress. I said, Don, I don't care about your progress. I trust you. Just, just get out of my office. No, he, <laughs> he stayed with it. <laughs> he did. Every Friday afternoon, he'd come in and says, okay, click, 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 click. See, we're right here. And he had the charts and he had the show. And, uh, you know, after a while, I totally bought into the process. And now I understand something from that experience. This is very personal, uh, that getting management bought into something isn't simply getting the check, it's getting them actually involved, singing the music in terms of what really matters to them. When I met with the Prime Minister of India, he wasn't interested in allocating some money for some GIS mapping or something. No, he said, I want to run the country with GIS. So what are you talking about? I was, I was, first, I was shocked. I said, yeah, I would like to understand when I give money to this state that the money is really effectively used and I want to see it in schools and I want to know that the villages are improving and I want to see it and I want to track it. I want to use it myself as a management tool. So in engaging with management, people that have policy sets and money, you talk in their language and uh, you figure out where their pain is or you figure out what their vision is. It's a very simple language. Remember that. Write it down. When you're talking to an executive, you find out where their pain is, what's bleeding, and what's causing them to have problems. And you say, hey, what's your pain? So, it comes right out of their mouth. <laughs> These guys know it very well. Or what's your vision for the city? Oh, I want more citizen engagement. We saw that with Bill Oates on, on Monday morning. The vision of the mayor in, in that city is I want to have citizen engagement. And I want to have a different democracy. The, the vision of President Obama is I want to have open democracy and more social networking as a mechanism for engaging citizens and blah, blah, blah. GIS can be sold into that. But, you know, that's my point. Uh, so engage with, you engage. Don't say, well, my boss or whatever. Engage with people who actually control money and sell into that environment uh, the, the power of what you guys are owning and holding. Don't, you know, meekly go along, well, I, there's, no, that's not the way you play at 100%. So, you got me worked up. <laughs> anyway. All right, so I think great message there from Jack. One of the things, too, that you should realize is that executives and elected officials, they are not interested in purchasing technology. They're interested in solutions to their problems and things that will get them closer again to their vision and alleviate their pain. And so it takes a special way to talk to them. If you need help with that, your Esri account team can help with that. Again, there's also a communicating with value session coming up. Uh, so the next point is develop and maintain a GIS strategic plan. This plan needs to align with your organization's strategic plan. It needs to align with your organization's IT strategic plan. And a great way to do this is to in order to do a plan, you need to know first where you're at. So you need to do a self-assessment and grade yourself to see where you're at, to see where, where you need to go. Um, and so one of the tools you can use for that are some maturity assessments. ERISA has one. There's an excellent new one called Slim Jim um, that uh, we, had the, we had the developer of that here yesterday speaking. Really great one. Check that one out. And then also there's one called the GeoVision Assessment put together by Oakland County, Michigan that's available um, on their website as well. Um, and then what you, once you know where you're at, you can then identify where there's room for an expansion of services. And then it's simply just prioritizing and executing in phases in a sustainable fashion to close those gaps or those, move into those white spaces. 
Um, I know many organizations don't have strategic plans. I don't understand this because you can't be effective if you don't know where you are, where you're going, or how to get there. So um, strategic plans can be daunting. You don't have the time. You might not want to hire somebody and pay them a lot of money to do it and be a big document that sits on the, on the shelf and never used. There's other ways around this. And specifically, I know Slim Jim will help you move forward really quickly. And it doesn't take a lot of time and money and effort. A few years ago, I had uh, Gary McGuire from uh, Southern Australia speak, and he, he wrote an article also about the strategic potential of GIS for ARC News. Um, and he presented on strategic value of GIS, and this was one slide, and I had to pull it out because I just thought it was so eloquent. And this is the executive summary of his strategic plan. And this could easily be the strategic plan executive summary for any organization that uses GIS. He had distilled it down to these four things. Their job is to coordinate. They want to facilitate collaboration. Nobody works alone. Everybody has to collaborate with other people. And if you make them, um, give them tools that helps them facilitate or helps them collaborate better, um, your value in the organization is instantly raised. So one of the big directives for him is they're going to help people collaborate. Number two, simplify. They want to improve business practices. Their goal is to make the organization work better, be more efficient. Number three, they want to innovate. They want to constantly deliver smarter service offerings. Everybody here should be innovating. And lastly, they want to enable informed decision makers. They want to put the tools in the hands of the decision makers so that they can make decisions directly without having to go through and requesting things and, and get other things done. That right there is a beautiful executive summary for any strategic plan. Um, you've probably seen the, the, these nine patterns of business patterns that are, um, ArcGIS supports um, throughout the, the conference, uh, but it's important to know about these nine patterns. So ArcGIS supports these in any organization, uh, mapping and visualization, data management, field mobility, monitoring real time, analytics, design and planning, decision support, constituent engagement, and sharing and collaboration. So if ArcGIS can support all of these nine business patterns, then in order to extract the ultimate value from your GIS, you should be implementing solutions across every one of these patterns in every department in your organization. So if you want a shortcut to a strategic plan, uh, I created this very simple matrix in Excel. Every column is one of those nine patterns, and then each row is a department in your organization. So just go into Excel, create this spreadsheet, and then all you have to do is color the cells. Green means I'm meeting the need in that organization, in that pattern. Yellow means I'm partially meeting the need. And then red means I'm not meeting the need. You can do this in just a couple of hours. And this instantly shows you where you need to be working. So all I need to do is just start to prioritize each of these boxes and start to turn them green. And then over the next three, four, or five years, if I've got all my boxes green, guess what? I'm extracting the most ROI for my GIS. I'm providing as most services to my organization. And i am got a true enterprise GIS. So this is my shortcut that I created to use with some customers to get a quick start on a strategic plan. I believe organizations should do more than this towards their strategic plan, but it's a great place to start. And when it comes to prioritization, I pulled this from our best practices, folks, um, is it, it's important to understand the prioritization and how that goes into, into consideration of which projects to do. And so I love this graphic. You've got the benefit on the left and the challenges at the bottom there. So that upper right quadrant, if you've got high benefit and low challenge, those are the things you should be doing right away. And if you've got low benefit and low challenge, those are the things you should be experimenting with. In the upper left, if you've got high benefit but high challenge, cautiously embrace those. But that lower left quadrant, low benefit and high challenge, stay away from those. So this is a great way to help you map out which projects belong in which quadrant and then you know exactly what order to attack them from. And you should be delivering real solutions. So in a sustainable manner, again, only writing code when absolutely necessary. So we've got a ton of apps available to you. You can go to esri.com slash software slash apps. They're divided into apps for the field, apps for the office, apps for the community, app builders. 
We've got our ArcGIS solutions site, solutions.arcgis.com. You heard Jack talk about these on Monday. There's over 450 solutions. They're all free. They're all open source. They're all supported. When we come out with a new version, they'll be migrated for you. So there really is a very low total cost of ownership. So this is your app store that you should use to turn those boxes from red to green. So if you find that you need field mobility solutions for public works, you come in here, you look at the solutions for public works, you find the field mobility solutions, you grab them, implement them, and you go. And again, there's these posters available that outline all of these different um, solutions by uh, industry. Again, it's impossible for you to know all 450 apps and where they're applicable and how to implement them. That's where you um, lean on your Esri account team. That's our job to know the apps. So when you find an opportunity for an app, call your account team. They'll help you select the best one and also help show you how to implement them. And some of these can even be implemented with a couple of clicks using ArcGIS Pro with the solution deployment tool. So you can really make a big impact pretty fast. Uh, open data, another big solution out there. I've seen too many customers that the GIS folks have not let the IT folks know that they already own an open data solution inside of ArcGIS. It's no additional cost and they run out and spend money on an open data solution they maybe didn't need. So if you've got an open data initiative in your organization, please let them know about ArcGIS open data. If it fits your needs, use it. If it doesn't, then go purchase one. But I've seen too many organizations purchase one that they didn't need it and they're really very easy to deploy. Uh, this is an example from Louisville, Texas. Um, I saw this uh, presented and they deployed this one in 24 hours. It hooks up to a SQL database and even has a performance dashboard that's live that gives key performance indicators and metric at how well the government is performing. Another great one is Johns Creek, Georgia, their data hub. Um, you heard Jack mention them shortly in the in the in the plenary on Monday as well. Um, theirs is a really great, uh, really great open data site. It's got live dashboards in it. So this is a uh, public op operations dashboard. Um, by the way, Johns Creek, Georgia has a population of about 84,000 people and their GIS department is two people. So it doesn't take a staff of hundreds to do this stuff. You can do it very quickly. Um, this is their business licenses dashboard. This is their public works work order dashboard. Here's one on building permits as well. So um, this is a great way to change people's mindset on being a map maker to a solution provider. It's providing a different experience and value. I love dashboards so bear with me as I show a bunch of them. Um, this one I really love. This is from Oro Valley, Arizona. This is tracking built and unbuilt lands through the city. Um, every city and county in America should have this because they're always looking at what part of the land is developable and what isn't, what needs to be protected. You constantly need to be tracking uh, built and unbuilt uh, por portions of your city. And so this is a live dashboard that lets them do it very quickly, allows them to get a one up on uh, in all their planning initiatives. Here's one more. This is from the Georgia um, Emergency Management um, Agency. This one is a live traffic dashboard. And what's great here is it's integrated with Waze. So all of the Waze alerts and all that are pumped right in here. They've got live access to traffic cameras. Um, there's another customer in Georgia that's once a Waze alert is um, appears on the map, it automatically does a buffer and automatically brings up the closest camera so that they can see exactly what's happening uh, related to that alert. So really great stuff, uh, real time stuff is, is, is hugely valuable these days. And I'm sure you've heard about the hub. Um, this is a two way engagement platform to connect government and citizens. This is a really key solution towards moving towards some of those initiatives that your organization might uh, be interested in. So maybe homelessness is a big initiative in your organization. The hub can help you engage the, the, um, the citizenry uh, and the business community and get input from them on working together towards solving that problem. You can deploy apps, you can deploy entire websites dedicated to each of these initiatives. So um, if you've got some key initiatives your organization is looking to attack, definitely check out the hub while you're here. Uh, it's, it's a really powerful uh, solution for that. Um, next, uh, if you're going to raise your game and implement a lot more solutions in your organization, you need to upgrade your infrastructure. Uh, too often I talk to customers and they argue with me about that everything's just fine, I can run my whole enterprise GIS off of one or two or three servers. 
So if you start deploying solutions um, to turn those boxes green on your matrix without analyzing the effect it's going to have on your hardware, it's not going to help you at all because it's going to be slow, it's not going to perform, it might fall down and that's the last thing you want to happen is to have infrastructure that's not ready to support your applications, especially if you're providing key applications that the business needs to run and they've got executives and directors using them, they better run fast and they better not go down. So what you're looking at right here is the GIS infrastructure for Pinellas County, Florida. This is 53 servers. Um, this is following our best practices and this, my friends, is what enterprise GIS looks like. This is real enterprise GIS. So your organization should say, instead of saying, I don't want to implement any more servers, you should be saying, I want to be like Pinellas one day. Uh, because that's when you know you're really a cornerstone of the business that goes on in that organization. I will have you know that this is a dated diagram. The new one has an additional 40 four zero servers that they've deployed for a total of 93 because they're implementing CityWorks across multiple departments. So that is what GI enterprise GIS really looks like. Um, the next part is implement effective governance. So I harp on Pinellas all the time but governance is very much like metadata. Uh, we all know we should be doing it but we don't want to. It's boring and it's not interesting. But if um, if I had to point to one thing about why Pinellas is so successful, it would be their governance. They've got some unique things in their governance. Um, one of the things that Brian Zumwalt, the GIS manager there, told me is he, he said, we, we do not want our process to get in the way of progress. So we do need some structure, but it shouldn't get in the way of getting the business done. You must obtain and cultivate executive sponsorship. So the way an ex uh, um, a GIS is successful is if it's sponsored from executives and elected officials. They've got that built in because they've got a GIS steering committee. That steering committee has elected officials and executives on it from multiple departments. That's not unique. But some of the things that that steering committee does is unique. But what that steering committee does is that cultivates this executive sponsorship. If you've got executives serving on this committee and they serve two years and they move through it, they're constant and they meet quarterly or every other month, they're constantly being barraged with all the value that GIS is uh, giving to the county and that way they get on board. But one of the things that they do there is they have a commitment to COTS or commercial off the shelf software or configuring solutions without writing code over custom. And the way they do that is if you want to do a custom app, you have to go in front of the steering committee and tell them why and also have shown a total cost of ownership analysis and prove that you have the resources to put that um, app into effect and keep it up. And if they like your argument, they'll let you do it. If they don't, then you don't get to do your custom app. And that's where that decision should be made. Too many organizations I see people walk into the developer's office, hey man, I need an app that does X, Y, and Z. Can you do that? Oh, sure thing, man. And I'm, I'm all over it. That is a business decision. That is not a can I do it. It's should you do it. Um, the other thing is they do the prioritization. So I know um, often a GIS group gets caught in the middle between multiple departments all wanting their stuff at once. There's arguments and I know the mayor and I have more money and this, that and the other. So this takes that completely out of the mix. What they do is all the project prioritization is set by the steering committee based on what's the strategic importance to the county's business. So the most things that, that matter are the things that get done first. You also need to implement evolutionary approaches which is change management. So again, you've got to embrace change, make it part of your routine. You should be participating in our early adopter community so you get access to our beta software and you can play around with it and know what the capabilities are and what changes need to be made before it comes out. You should participate in our developer program so you get access to just about every single piece of software we have so that you can evaluate it and play with it and see if it makes sense to implement in your organization. You need to make R&D part of everybody's work. So just like strategic planning, if you say I'll get to my R&D when I have time, it'll never happen because you won't have time. So you've actually got to go into your calendar and outlook or whatever you use and if it needs, if it takes Friday afternoons for four hours, I'm going to do R&D and put it on my calendar and that's what I'm going to do, that's the way you do it. And everybody in your organization should be participating in some sort of R&D. And then investigate the latest improvements in our, in our new versions and make plans to use them. Too many people I know just upgrade whenever they upgrade and they don't look at what's new that they can take advantage of. We've got 1,200 de developers uh, around the globe working tirelessly to cram new features and functions into ArcGIS every release. 
find out what those are and uh, utilize them to, your, to the utmost. You need to deploy engaging apps as well. So people want to use apps like those on their smartphones and tablets. These apps need to be focused and intuitive. They need to work on any device, anywhere, anytime. You need to focus on business drivers and not technology. Too much of the focus is on the technology rather than the business. Find the business problem and then bring the technology to the business problem. So it's all about the business, it's not about the technology. So the goal is to give everybody alternatives. That means they should be able to use any device. So your app should be responsive. But you've got to keep them in a known, controlled, and secure environment. This means identity. This means usernames and logins. People will be like, well, I don't like user, I don't want to log into this. You know, uh, go talk to whoever's in charge of computer security for your organization and talk to them about logins because their three priorities are security, security, and security. Um, and if people don't like to log in, then take them to the security officer and the security officer will make them log in. So um, we've all had hacking things that happen. I've had one of my, the county I live in, uh, in Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, got hit by ransomware last year. And the, the, um, they asked for $50,000 ransom. The county refused to pay for it. They, they had some key systems offline for months. Ended up costing them over $2 million in fixing that. So um, security is, is primary and, and identity is part of that. And then lastly, you want people using the latest and most authoritative data and processes. This means web services. So make web maps, tie them to live data via web services. You never need to make that map again because it updates itself and they can open it on any device. And a great place to start is in the mobile workforce. This is easy ROI. This is um, quick wins, low hanging fruit. Um, I know a lot of people have deployed solutions like uh, collector and survey one, two, three. But that's really only addressing one part of the five phases of field mobility. Before people go out in the field, you want to plan and prioritize it. Field work is expensive, it's dangerous. We want to make sure we're getting the right people to do the right stuff first and most efficiently. So you would use ArcGIS Pro to do that. Then once I figure that out, I can take those uh, work orders, push them to workforce for ArcGIS. This allows people to out in the field get their work orders and then we can use Navigator to route most efficiently to them. Once we get there, we can use any of the four different apps for capturing and then there's always somebody back in the office that um, wants to know what's happening out there so you would deploy an operations dashboard for that. So a great place to start is if you've already got people out in the field using Survey123 or Collector, start to explore the rest of this um, part of the uh, mobile workforce. Um, the last one here is recruit, develop, and maintain good staff. Uh, so you should be creating and maintaining a workforce development plan. There's a session part of the track all about that. Esri can help you create one at no cost. We've got a lot of different classes. It's hard to figure out which ones to take. They can analyze your staff, look at the roles and responsibilities of each staff member and then give you a roadmap of what classes that person should be taking uh, over, the t over time in order to get the skills that they need to do their job. This plan is critical if you want to get funding for training. Because normally I know people go to their boss and say, oh, can I get $10,000 for training? And they go, no. But if you show them a document that says these are the skills that my staff need, these are the classes that will help them get those skills, much more likely to get funding for your plan. And then as you as GIS managers, you need IT management and business skills. So you need skills on how to market and sell your team's capabilities to the leaders. You need to develop and maintain a business plan and a change management plan. We've got a change management session as part of this uh, track. You need to explore the IT management skills. You should know about system architecture design. You should know about service level agreements and enterprise system integration. You should know about security. You should know about project management. So brush up on these skills, take some classes, read some books, and then get help. No successful enterprise GIS that I've seen does it all themselves. They all get help. Get help from Esri, get help from our partners, get help from both of us. We work really well together. It's not an either or. And so I want you to understand the, you've got to develop these strong partnerships and the team. So I want to review the Esri team to make sure you're aware of all the resources you have available to you. Number one, your account team. That's your account manager and the solution engineer. You should know these people, you should get to know them, they should be your best friends. The best customers that were most successful when, when I worked with customers directly and I owned accounts were the ones where we were more of a partnership than an account and customer relationship. It definitely was that way with Pinellas. 
We also have a huge team of subject matter experts. So let's say you need to deploy some solutions in public works and you don't know anything about public works and you don't speak public works and you don't even know how to talk to the public works director about their business. Call your Esri account team. We've got public works experts that work for Esri that have been in that industry their entire lives and their professional lives and they work with the top public works organizations across the country. They can easily come in and help bridge that communications gap. So we have subject matter experts in just about every industry, whether it be law enforcement, fire rescue, emergency management, you name it, health, we've got them. So use those folks. Again, utilize your training consultant. You do have access to a training consultant that can help you with that workforce development plan. Hopefully you use our technical support a lot. Um, you might not know it, but we have premium support available. So if you've got part of your operation that works 24-7, 365, and you need support 24-7, 365, you can purchase premium support, get a dedicated technical account manager, and they will help drive all your support requests. We have a great professional services group. There's three different ways to engage them. We've got packages off the shelf like jump starts. You can just rent a tech uh, by the hour or you can actually engage projects related uh, work. And then if you're interested, our best customers um, engage in the Enterprise Advantage Program or EEAP. That is a single procurement method where you get uh, training, technical support, and professional services all in one package. You get a technical advisor. Each year they will create a strategic plan for you and then help you drive towards completing that plan every year. Um, again, uh, every customer that has that is getting more done because we're like your mom and we're pushing you to do these things that you don't think you have time to do. We also have a huge selection of wonderful partners. Uh, some of these partners have earned specialties like RTS Online specialty, the RTS for local government specialty. So if you need help in those areas, look for, um, look for partners that have earned those specialties. There's a ton of partners downstairs in the exhibit hall. Definitely check them out. And then also we have the RTS Marketplace where you can go to see a lot of their solutions that are available and additional services. Now in regards to your internal team, uh, you've got to develop and grow this team as well. So the number one, you've got to have those executive champions. And you need as many of these as possible because you don't want to just hook your wagon to one person because if that person retires or walks out the door, you're starting over again. So you want as many of these executive champions as you can. Your IT leadership sh should understand the value of GIS and be one of your biggest supporters. And then you need to change your, your role. Um, it used to be that all GIS work was done by the GIS team. Uh, that's no longer the case. So your, 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 um, your role has shifted. You should be enabling others to do GIS work. So enable others to collaborate. Empower them to do their own GIS work. That will really raise your value to the organization and people will be blown away by the help that you're giving them. And then Brian told me at Pinellas that he has the mindset of a GIS consulting firm. He viewed his GIS group as a consultancy and all the people in the organization that were his customers. And he wanted happy customers, he wanted more customers, he wanted to eliminate the competition, and he wanted to bring in a profit. And that profit was ROI. Um, so government is a business, nonprofits are businesses, no organization wants to lose money, so you don't have to be a private sector business to look at it in that way. And then market spatial analysis. GIS was created to do spatial analysis. Too often we learn about it in college and that's the thing that gets us involved with GIS, then we get a job and we don't do any spatial analysis. And the reason is, is because nobody in your organization knows what that is and knows that they need it. So you've got to market that capability. That's the biggest ROI you're going to get. And then measure, document, and publicize your impact, which is your ROI, um, and get it out there. Nobody's going to toot your horn if you don't do it yourself. So. Um, this is a screenshot of, a, of an ROI spreadsheet that Wade Kluse um, uh, created and distributes. He's going to be doing an ROI session tomorrow. Again, it, I, I suggest you attend that one. He's a real expert on, on GIS ROI. Um, and then lastly, some more resources. This document here, I believe, personally, is the most important document Esri ever, ever produced. It's our Architect in the ArcGIS Platform Best Practices document. It's revised at least once a year. <laughs> Um, there's going to be a session on this document as part of the track. You should read this document one, two, three, four times, memorize it, implement it, uh, do everything that there is to it. It's not a long document. It's not overly technical. 
And then check out the implementing ArcGIS area on GeoNet as well as the implementing ArcGIS area in the exhibit hall downstairs. That is our most strategic folks that can help you get a more business like strategic look at your organization. There's also a managers in GIS LinkedIn group I'd like you to join um, and there's a lot of good information there. Again, there's some events. We had the open, the managers open summit yesterday. Uh, we've also got meetups. If you go to meetups.com and query for Esri, there's these virtual meetings online um, all the time in different industries. You can sign up for them. They're all recorded. They take questions and answers. It's really good. And then I've also been doing a series of GIS manager workshops across the country to help get people focused on this business sides of things. And then lastly again that account team, they should be your best friends and they're the most important part of uh, being successful. I mean Jack tells us that as, as, a, as a group our goal is to do nothing but make our customers successful. So our job is to make you guys just like Pinellas and have videos shot of you. So let us help you work with us and um, we, we'll do everything we can to, to make that happen. Okay, that's all I've got. Uh, again, here's my contact information. There's my email. I'm on GeoNet. Um, I'm on Twitter, and I'm also on LinkedIn. And I love to talk to other customers and uh, and help any way I can. So that's all I've got. Um, I'd be happy to take questions if anybody has any questions. Thanks. No questions. Yes, the uh, question was will the slides be available? They will um, be available and um, it will all be hyperlinked so anytime I had a screen cap that w went to something they will be, you'll be able to click on it and it will take you to that article or whatever you'd like. So yeah, these will be available just like just about any uh, presentation here at the conference as part of the proceedings. And then again, um, I would love your feedback so please um, fill out the survey for this session in your events app. I really want to make my presentations better each time and I can't do that without your input. So thanks very much for your time. Please take advantage of your week here uh, and let us know how we can help. Thank you.